What's the least amount of this therapy that I could offer to get the maximum benefit that I'm looking for? As a healthcare provider, regardless of the therapy that I'm offering, my job is to figure out safe and effective protocols that people could follow to reach their goals. What that means to me is that I'm consistently looking for the minimum effective dose. In this video, we're gonna talk about why I believe the minimum effective dose is so important and offer some guidelines to follow as you're creating protocols for the people you're working with. In practice, any therapy that's worth offering due to the benefits that a patient may receive will also come with some set of risks or potential consequences. In order for a therapy to be effective, that therapy is a stimuli. The body has to understand and register the stimulus and then create a response to the stimulus. If the stimulus is too low, the body may not register it, and therefore there's really no major response or benefit from the therapy. Likewise, if that stimulus is too high and the body has to work so hard to create a response and or it creates a little bit more damage than what the body was able to tolerate, perhaps we've done more harm than good in that session. To me, finding the minimum effective dose means we're looking for the least amount of this therapy that will trigger the highest amount of benefit and the smallest amount of damage. By doing this, even if it means we're moving a little bit slower, it definitively means we're moving at a safe pace for that person. And the minimum effective dose is gonna vary based on who this person is, what they're coming in with, how healthy or unhealthy they were before they came in. And so there's no set standard for the minimum effective dose, but there are strategies to try to find it. One of the biggest issues inside of hyperbaric, but this is true of most therapies or even most longevity strategies. If some hyperbaric is good for me, more must be better. I tried this mild version, I loved it, so I made it a little stronger, I went a little deeper, I added more oxygen, I went a little deeper, I stayed a little longer, I did it more frequently. And there are reasons to build in that way at the same time, and I've said this many times before, just because there's a certain amount that you get a response from does not mean more of it will give you more of that favorable response. In fact, that can completely backfire. And before you know it, you're getting unfavorable responses, leading you to discontinue that therapy altogether when all you had to do was go back to the minimum effective dose. Now, hyperbaric is inherently safe, and so the consequences of hyperbaric, even at the extreme ends, are really not that severe necessarily, but there are things that people need to know. We know and understand that there's a thing called oxygen toxicity. We've done a handful of videos on that. To learn more about oxygen toxicity, we'll add links to those videos in the description below. If you have cataracts, hyperbaric can increase the maturation rate of those cataracts. It could create temporary changes in your vision, which are reversible, but still nonetheless, did this person need to go through that? And even something as simple as it does increase reactive oxygen species. We've done a number of videos on that. That doesn't mean that's all bad. Actually, we know that reactive oxygen species also has a very specific and really important role in cell signaling for repair and inflammation control. However, for a fragile patient who's dealing with a lot of health issues, over oxidizing them is going to create more harm than good. So for us, we have a very specific way that we go through this thought process in our office, trying to always be looking for the minimum effective dose. So let's talk a little bit about how I do that. We're working really hard over here at HBOT USA to make sure that all the people looking for this kind of information are able to find it. When you like it, when you subscribe to it, when you share these videos, that tells YouTube that this content is valuable. When YouTube knows this content is valuable, they tend to help other people searching similar concepts find the answers that they're looking for. So please do me a favor, like it, subscribe it, and share it so that YouTube knows how valuable the information is that we're giving you. When somebody comes in and I understand their health history, their health issues, and or their health goals, I start to create in my mind a range of pressure and frequency and duration of what I think would be required to get them the results they're looking for. If you're unsure of where that starting point would even be, let me just suggest that you either take more courses in hyperbaric medicine, and or Dr. DeTori and I published a book last October, The Art and Science of Hyperbaric Medicine, where we put protocols based on mechanism of action and indication inside this book, which would be a terrific starting point for understanding what some of those target pressures ought to look like. Once I have this target pressure, target frequency and duration, I share that with the patient so they understand where my mind is going and why I'm choosing these pressures, frequency and duration. And then I tell them that regardless of the fact that this is the target, we're not gonna start there. Everybody in our office gets 1.3 on their first visit. For us, that's about the most mild we could offer. And in many cases, it's effective enough. So we start at 1.3 and if warranted, over a series of sessions, we work them up towards 1.5. And again, if necessary or warranted, and they're tolerating that well, we will start to ramp it up closer to whatever their target pressure happens to be. If during that ramp up time, they're already starting to show incredible changes at pressures lower 
than what I thought the target would be, I don't necessarily push for that target. I may hold them at that pressure longer and or for their entire protocol if we're getting the result. If they're starting to show some benefit, but it's really not what we were looking for, then we will work our way towards that target over a series of a few weeks. Likewise, if I had a specific target in mind and I'm working somebody up towards that target and they start to express signs and symptoms that they're not tolerating this therapy very well, then we will back it down and we will hold it at a lower pressure for a long enough period of time that they become more resilient and more able to tolerate the therapy and then choose to potentially move back up towards that target pressure. Once you're doing this long enough and you see how different people respond to different pressures over different periods of time, you will start to gain a lot more confidence with regard to how fast you think that ramp up could go. In the beginning, I recommend doing it slowly. Every visit, even if it isn't at their target pressure, is still therapeutic. It's still going to be a stimulus for change. It's still going to produce some result at the cellular level. And every session a person does will allow them to tolerate the next session more easily. Another quick point. A lot of patients are nervous when they first come in. They're nervous about their first experience. They're nervous because they understand that this is a huge time commitment. It may also be a huge financial commitment. And in most cases, you know that we're probably not gonna get massive change in the first session or two. If we create some other issue for them in those first two sessions, if we over-oxidize them unnecessarily in those first two sessions, the likelihood that they will stick around long enough to actually reach the destination that you and they were hoping for is very unlikely. It's critical that they have a good experience and that you build rapport and trust in those first few visits, helping to ensure that they stick around long enough to go through their protocol so that they get the result that you and they knew that they needed, which is another reason not to push them too hard, too fast, especially in those first few sessions. Some practitioners feel like if there's a target pressure and they're not hitting it on day one, then they're missing the mark. I wanna be crystal clear that in my opinion, that's not true. There's a range of pressures that people will respond to, and our job is to find the lowest pressure necessary to get the highest result possible. I hope this helps explain what the minimum effective dose is and the thought process for how to find it. I appreciate your time and attention, and I'll see you on the next video. Whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are going to be.